when we're solving a system, the way the system looks dictates the strategy that I use. When I have a system and one equation is solved for one variable, then I'm going to use substitution because that's the st most streamlined way of solving it. But I want to present to you a different problem. So we're going to kind of leave the objective blank for a moment while we kind of look at a different problem. Kyler, you had a question or are you good? Who are you staying with? My brother. Uh, I will allow your brother to sign it for you. And you just need to communicate with your parents. Okay. Now, you saw some problems like this. And what we told you to do was to get one variable alone and then use substitution. But I want to show you a different strategy. The whole point to solving a system is to eliminate one of the variables. Because if I can get it here, bring it here. If I can eliminate one of the variables, we're just starting now. If I can eliminate one of the variables, then I can solve an equation that just has one variable in it. So is there anything that you think that we could do without altering the way the equations look that would allow me to get rid of a variable so that I could solve for the remaining one? Anything that you could do to those two equations to get something to disappear. Victoria. Nothing? How do I get numbers to equal zero? Because that's what we need to do, is to get something to equal zero here. What kind of numbers give me a zero? Okay, beyond zero. I'm doing math, and I get a zero. Now look at our, my problems here and think about what kind of math could I do, and how could I get a zero. Mark? I could, but then I'm changing an entire equation. I can't change the equations. Okay, so the equations have to stay the way they are right now. What could I do? How do I get things to give me a zero when they actually have a value? And we were to talk about that would alter what it looked like. I can't alter what it looks like. So they have to stay those values. But there's something mathematically I could do that's going to make one of the terms subtract go away. From, uh, subtract both x and y. So what do you mean subtract both x and y? Like Okay. Well, you, you're telling me to subtract x and subtract y, and I'm not sure what you're talking about. Subtract x minus y. I can't. I don't know what x is, and I don't know what y is. That's the problem. Kyla? What what I substitute that in for? So x equals 5 minus y, and then you want it to equal 0? I don't think we could do that, because now you're, again, you're altering what the equations look like. I want these equations to stay exactly the same. All right? I'll narrow my question. Name two numbers that when I add them, I get 0. Okay? 0 plus 0 is boring. A negative 1 and a positive 1. What do we call the, a number that's the same number, but the signs are different? What are they called? They're not called weird numbers. What do we call it? Two numbers. They're exactly the same except for their signs are different. What do we call those? Yeah, reciprocal, you flip. Take a fraction. You guys don't know this? This is opposites. Hello. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. I wouldn't be going on if I couldn't hear it. If you guys are going to mumble it and talk into your hand and not look at me when you're talking and raise your hand so I know to look at you, I'm not going to hear you. So don't sit there and get annoyed that I excluded listening to your solution when, honestly, you didn't actually make it a presentation of a solution. If we can find opposites, 
in our two equations. We can add opposites to equal zero. In those two equations, what are considered opposites? John, say that again. Uh, no, I'm talking about my equations. They're not opposites. Yeah, these the guys. There's a positive y and there's a negative y. They're opposites. So if I add my equations, what's x plus x? 2x. What's y plus negative y? That's what goes to 0. So we eliminate one of the variables by simply adding the equations together. This equals 6, and then we continue to solve just by dividing both sides by 2. And we get x equals 3. Okay? And then we take that value, we plug it back into either original equation, and we solve for the other variable. So I have the x is 3 plus the y equals 5, and then I just do opposite operations to get the y alone and get y equals 2. So I have a solution to this problem of 3, 2. And I can double check it, 3 plus 2 equals 5, yep. 3 take away 2 equals 1, yep. So this particular strategy we're going to talk about works only when you have a pair of opposites in your two equations, okay? So our objective today is to uh, learn how to eliminate a variable in a system by adding. Now, there's going to be a group of questions that are going to be set up exactly for this process where you look and say, oh, there's a pair of opposites. Good. If I add the two equations, they're going to eliminate. It's not going to happen in all of them, but tonight that's all we're going to focus in on nice equations that when I add them together, I have a set of opposites on one variable and they will eliminate when I add the equations together. Okay? And then we'll talk about, well, what if they don't have opposites? How can we deal with that? And then we're going to talk about, well, what if we don't have anything remotely close to an opposite? How do we deal with that? Okay? So we're going to be dealing with this idea of whole idea is called elimination, but there's multiple different ways to do elimination. Okay? And the whole time that we're solving, we're looking for the simplest way to solve a problem. That's really what it's all about. Okay. So let's talk in steps what we're going to do, and then we're going to go ahead and um, write down some notes. I do also, oh, you know what? Let's go back here. I do want to tell you I found some out of here. Hold on a second. So I was looking in the online book that we were piloting, and I found some personal math trainers on the different strategies. So I wanted to give them to you. So we'll put it right here. I found a personal math trainer just for substitution. So if you weren't feeling comfortable with that, you can go back and look at that. And the personal math trainer was on page 238. So you can go to the online book and you can practice that. Um, then I found one for elimination. By adding. So that's all that we're talking about today. So if you need extra practice with that, personal math trainer on page 246. Let me just double check to see if there's any more. Nope, that's it. That's the one. Okay, so extra practice that you can find on the online book. If you've forgotten your login information, um, I believe I have it here in the room too, so you can ask me and get you back on there. Okay, so good place for extra practice. So let's go and write down some um, steps, things that we need to follow. So number one, Taylor, you have a question? 
246. So our process is going to be we need to make sure we have one condition. If this condition isn't met, this is not going to work. Okay, I'm going to tell you tonight all your problems have this condition being met. So first thing you need to look for is, is there one variable that is opposite to the same variable in the other equation or in the system of the same variable. We must have this. If our answer is yes, that yes, we have one variable and he has an opposite in the other equation. So if I deal with them, they're going to disappear. If your answer is yes, you get to proceed. If your answer is no, then you're going to have to wait until I teach you something else. Okay? You could always try substitution if you wanted to. So if yes, which today is yes, you're going to continue. So the next step would be add the equations. Add the equations and eliminate the opposites. Now it is possible to have more than one set of opposites. Your constants could be opposite. Both pairs of variables could be opposites. Now that's going to pose a really interesting solution. Okay. So add the equations and eliminate the opposites. And in essence, you're, you are actually eliminating one variable. You're going to be left with a simple one-step equation where you've got the remaining variable equals some number, and sometimes there's a coefficient, sometimes they're not. Uh, well, actually, there should be a co coefficient all the time in front of that. Um, and you're going to solve for the remaining variable. solve for the remaining variable. So if you eliminated y, the remaining variable is x. If you eliminated x, the remaining variable is y. Okay. So now we have half of our answer. I and we're taking notes and we're not scribbling. I've kind of had enough of your scribbles for a while. Then we're going to substitute this value into either original equation and solve for the oops for the other variable. And then your answer is an ordered pair. And we always write it alphabetically. All right, so let's go through a couple different types of problems that you may be seeing on your homework tonight. Uh, we'll do a couple basic ones, and then we'll um, do a couple of more challenging kinds. Directions are going to say uh, solve. And the assumption is that you're going to be showing all work. Now, you may hear this being called uh, use the addition method. I think let's, this one calls it elimination. And most of the time, elimination uses addition, but we'll talk about um, a different way tomorrow. 
with elimination. So this is the overall, the most mathematically accurate term, is what happens when we add, we eliminate a variable. So that's where they come up with the word elimination. All right, so let's do a couple of basic ones. Uh, we have x plus y equals 8 and negative x plus 2y equals 7. So you should notice something interesting about how your equations are written. Um, when we were doing the equations with substitution, several of the equations were written in uh, slope-intercept form. But these aren't written in slope-intercept form. So one of the strategies is to write equations in what's called standard form. And standard form has x's and y's together on the left, constant on the right. And so if your equation is not written in standard form, you may first try that, solving to get it in standard form and then looking for opposites. Okay, But tonight you're going give, to be given all the opposites, or given the equations in standard form. Okay, So that's what we want. All right, so let's look and see if we have. Do we have one variable that has opposites? Yes. Okay, and what's that? Yes. Okay, we've got our x's. So that says if you go ahead right now and add your equations together, your x's will eliminate. You'll have a y plus a 2y, which is a 3y. And an 8 plus a 7 is a 15. Then you divide both sides by 3, and you get y equals 5. So I have half of my solution already. Now I'm going to take that y equals 5 and substitute it into either original equation. I'm going to do the top one because it has the least amount of work. And I have x plus the y value 5 equals 8, and then I subtract 5 from both sides, and I get x equals 3. So that's the other half to my solution. And then I can check, does 3 plus 5 equal 8? Yeah. If I have negative of 3 plus 2 times 5 is 10, so negative 3 plus 10 is 7, that works. So there's your answer. Okay. So let's do another one like that. Um, let's do 8x minus 5y equals negative 9, and 3x plus 5y equals negative 2. So do I have one variable that's considered opposites? Yes. Okay. And if you notice, you have definitely the y's. They, well, you have one negative y, 5y, and one positive 5y. So if I add my equations together, I get 8x plus 3x is 11x. My y's eliminate, and I get negative 9 plus negative 2 is negative 11. Divide both sides by 11, and I get x equals negative 1. So I've got half of my answer so far. Okay. Now I'm going to take that... And these equations are kind of ugly because everything's got a coefficient. So I think I'm going to go with the one that has at least a positive y. So I'm going to go and substitute back into this guy. So 3 times the x value of negative 1 plus 5y equals negative 2. And I start solving. So I have negative 3 plus 5y equals negative 2. Add 3 to both sides. I get 5y equals 1, and then divide both sides by 5. And that gives me y equals 1 fifth. So notice, yes, it is possible to get um, some fractions in our answers. But we can test. We get uh, negative 8, and then see 5, negative 5 times 1 fifth is negative 1. So negative 8 and negative 1 equals negative 9. Uh, 3 times negative 1, negative 3, 5 times 1 fifth is 1, so negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, so it works. Okay, so let's try something a little bit more challenging. Same ideas. What if we have A plus B equals... Now, let's do it this way. I was hoping for something different. Oop. Let's do... I was trying to find a yucky question, and they have... Not so many yucky questions. Eh. So I'll pull one off of here. So we have 1 half x plus 2 thirds y.
equals 11 fourths. And then we have 1 fourth x minus 2 thirds y equals 25 fourths. Do I have opposites? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Even though it's not pretty, the y's are opposites. I've got a positive 2 thirds y and a negative 2 thirds y. So if I add the equations, I'm going to eliminate the y's. Now, I come into a little bit of a problem. What's the problem? Yeah, the x's don't have a common denominator. So what I do have is I'm going to take 1 half and I'm going to add it with 1 fourth x. We'll get to that in a second. Do I have a common denominator on the constants? Yeah. yeah, that's nice. So I add those, and I get 36 over 4. Oh, yeah, that is 9. Okay, well, that's cool. All right, so let's see what we can do over here. I'm going to have to take this larger fraction and turn it into a fraction that has 4 in the denominator. So what is the new numerator then? 32. It's going to be a 2, and here's the reason why. 2 times 2 is 4, and I have to multiply the top by the same thing. Okay, I'm just changing the 1 half. Now, I'm going to add it with a 1 fourth. So all together, I get 3 fourths x equals, and you're absolutely right, that reduces to 9. But let's leave it like that for just a second, because we're still not done. When we're talking about solving equations, what do we do if the coefficient is a fraction? What do we say was the easiest way of of getting rid of that fraction? Um, multiply by the denominator. We can multiply by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So the 4s cancel, leaving me with 3x. But guess what? The 4s cancel as well on the other side, leaving me 36. All right, then what? Uh, you divide by 3. I divide by 3. And I get x equals 12. So that's half of my answer. Now I'm going to plug that back in to either original equation and solve for y. So I think again I'm going to pick the guy that has the y that's positive. So I'm going to get 1 half times the x value 12 plus 2 thirds y equals 11 fourths. Well 2 goes into 12 six times. So I get 6 plus 2 thirds y equals 11 fourths. So now I'm going to have to subtract 6 from both sides. So what we need to do is to have fractions that have the same denominator. So we're going to get them both to have a denominator of 4. The top guy, he's fine. He just stays as 11 fourths. All right, what do I multiply the 6 by to get to a denominator of 4? Well, I'm going to multiply both by 4. So I have a negative 24 over here. So at this point... Let's see, what am I left with? 2 thirds, Two -thirds y equals a negative 13 fourths. All right. And then we can do what Sophia told us to try before. So let's multiply by 3. Okay. And that gave me 2y equals negative 39 fourths. And then here comes the problem. If I try to divide by 2... I'm going to have a fraction inside of a fraction. So one of the strategies that I had worked with you guys on that seems like nobody remembers is that instead of dividing by 2, the, we can also do the reciprocal and multiply by 1 half. That kind of makes it a little bit easier to do my math. And we get y equals negative 39 over 8. So we write our answer over here is negative 39 over 8. Or we could change it to a mixed number. So we had 12 went in, and we would have 8 goes into 38 four times, uh, which is 32 with 7 left over. And you could write the answer that way. So again, I saw several people just kind of, eh, I don't need to do this because it's fractions. You're going to have to deal with it. So just try. It's not that bad. You know, lots of things you have to remember to do. All right, I got one more example. Are we ready? Okay, I'll come look at it and see what it looks like. All right, the last problem.
Let's see, how do I want to do this? Um, so I've got 3x plus 5y equals 11. And I have 5 times the quantity x minus y equals 5. Huh. What's the problem here? Parentheses. Yeah, the parentheses. So I really can't judge this until I deal with getting rid of the parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So I still am going to have the 3x plus 5y equals 11. And when I distribute, I have 5x minus 5y equals 5. All right, so now I'm going to ask the question, do I, now that I can compare them, do I have opposites with one of the variables? Yeah, yeah if you notice, your y's ended up being opposites. So when I add the two equations, we're going to get 3x plus 5x is 8x. The y's will eliminate equals 16 divided by 8, and we get x equals 2. So there's half of my answer. And then I'm going to plug this number back into either original equation, and it doesn't matter which one I choose. I'm going to go with the top since I don't have to distribute that way. And substitute in 2 for the x. So I get 6 plus 5y equals 11. Subtract 6 from both sides. That gives me 5y equals 5. Divide by 5, and I get y equals 1. And then I just found my other answer. Oops, it's supposed to change. So we've got 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times 1 is 5, 6 plus 5 is 11. So it works for the first one. 2 take away 1 is 1, 5 times 1 is 5, and that works. So those are problems that you're going to see on the homework tonight. So now you have a model for each of them.